This is Bishop Michael Priester coming to you live from His Presence Family Worship Center right here in Jacksonville, Florida. Now we're going to take you to a previous recorded message entitled Our First. And after that, I'll be right back to share some more information with you concerning this new service. God bless you. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks for He has given. Jesus Christ, His only Son, and now let the weak say I am strong, let the poor say I am rich, because of what the Lord has done. For us, give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks for he has given Jesus Christ, his only son. And now let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am Because of what the Lord, the Lord has done, not just for me, but all of us, give thanks. That's all we got to do tonight. Give thanks. Through it all, children, give thanks. I want to give him praise. If you're grateful tonight, hallelujah. Oh God. Hallelujah. Come on, I don't hear y'all praising. Hallelujah. I don't hear y'all worshiping the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I feel something in this house. I feel like anything is possible tonight, Apostle Brand. Healing, deliverance, miracles. Signs and wonders, I believe, hallelujah, that God is here, God is here. Somebody say that. God is here, God is here, God is here, God is here. Here to meet every need, hallelujah. Here to deliver, set free, hallelujah. He's here, hallelujah. Oh God, thank you, Lord. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's give God a big praise and then we can take our seats. Of his seat, give him a praise and sit on down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Once again, we thank God. Amen for, amen, our apostle brand. Amen. Praise God. Thank God for him. Amen. All of these are, uh, Great man of God, amen, Dupree, and uh, all of the Hayes, the him just say the Hayes brothers. There's just so many Hayes, whenever we come together, you see Hayes every day. Amen, Elder Tobe, amen, who I admire, amen, a great preacher, young man, preaching the gospel, amen. Bishop Williams, a mother strong, amen. That's the greatest encouragement to me. Last time I tried to express that to her, went to crying, I thought about my mom being saved and amen, being a woman. So I looked at her all of a sudden, I just see, amen, saw a vision of my mother. So last time, if y'all understand why I was crying, and that's what it was all about, how she's a strong woman, amen, and to still exemplify what it is, amen, to walk in the power and the strength of God, amen. Bishop Polite, amen, who's in 
another encouragement to me. Amen. Against all odds, I never seen him give up. Sometimes I hear more than what I witness. Amen. But one thing I know that he's always willing. He always about the Father's business. That takes strength and courage to do what you do, to keep doing it every day. Doing all of the multitasks that you have to do and taking care of the family and working and all the things. You understand what I'm saying? God bless you, sir. Amen. And for your, all the saints, put your hands together for yourself. Oh, come on. You come through the fire, too. Ella James, God bless you. It's my brother. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God for my wife. Uh, there she is. Amen. Oh, she turned around. I don't know if she want me to call her name or not. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Well, I thank God for my wife. So raise your hand, honey. Amen, Sister Priest. The day we had our anniversary. Amen. Our um, wedding anniversary. Amen. And we kind of slept in late. I wasn't all slow by myself. But anyway, no, we had a, we had a, <laughs> everybody left. We had a good time today, amen. We just kind of got it. Didn't do too much, amen. But I just thank God, amen, for the years that she put up with me. Amen, amen. I'm sincere about that. Because being a pastor sometimes ain't always easy. And our wives share the load. Amen, amen. That's why the Bible, I believe, called them help meets. Amen. And that little split in the side, amen, was the note where God wanted her to be was beside the man. Amen. When God made man, woman was already there. Amen. Woman was all, woman, women was covering men even before they came out of the door. What does the rib cover? Think about your ribs. What does the rib cover? The heart, the kidneys, the lungs. Women was covering men long before they came outside the man. Y'all was covering men even while they were still in. That's too much. That's too much. I mean, that's too much. That's for marriage seminars. Um, John, John chapter 10, uh, chapter 19, uh, verse 28. They even thank God for uh, First Lady Brant. Where she at? I thought I saw her one time. Amen. Let's praise God for her. Amen. Amen. God bless you, all your, all the first ladies. Amen. Um, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Uh, let's go to, let's look at John, if you will. John chapter 19 and verse 28. Tonight my task is, uh, I thirst. And I want to let you know, amen, before we read this, uh, actually I need to turn to it. I had some other, other scriptures written out. I better turn to it myself. Amen. Uh, the task, amen, tonight I have with our thirst is to kind of share some light, amen, within 30 minutes to uh, reflect on what Jesus was really talking about. Those of us who understand, amen, our Bibles, we understand that Jesus was always the one, amen, offering, amen, some drink, fulfilling some void throughout all of the Bible. Can you say Amen. One portion in the scripture says, I'll be a well of water springing up. Another portion of the scripture said, if any man thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Amen. At the well, he told a woman, amen, who was, amen, religiously poisoned. He said, if you knew who was asking you for a drink and knew what the power that I had to give you, <laughs> you wouldn't be arguing with me right now. Amen. Amen. So, uh, but in this text tonight, just one little verse. Praise the Lord. We understand that Jesus' thirst was not a physical thing. It was a spiritual thing. Tied into a pyramid of three things, three components here. One is the presence, which is where we're going to start. The other one was righteousness, ending with doing the will of God. Can you say amen? Amen. If you study it out, do your cross references tonight and check me out if you will. <laughs> amen. You need to do that to make sure. Amen. But seriously, uh, you would understand that his thirst was to do the will of God. Can you say amen? amen. If we can just stand and read this one scripture, I can go ahead on and uh, allow God to be God and uh, we can uh, move on. Amen. I believe I got 28 minutes now. John chapter 19, and I believe verse 
uh, 28. Amen. Let's begin reading together in concert, if you will. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, oh Lord, that the scriptures might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Oh Lord. Uh, uh, I thirst. Uh, I thirst to do your will. Ah, for this is the reason why I came, is to please the Father. I didn't come with my own agenda. Mm, I come to do the will of the Father. John chapter 7, amen. He said, hallelujah, if you watch and notice even the doctrine that uh, I'm preaching, amen, is not of my own. In fact, I only do and say what the Father says, amen. I come to do the will of the Father. I don't have my own agenda. That's why ministers, amen, to have a married type spirit don't stay around long. Because you got to understand, you're called to do the will of God. And until God's will become your will, the will of God will never be done. Can you say amen? Y'all may be seated. Amen. Uh, the verse said that, uh, uh, Elder Toby, it said, uh, Lord, have mercy here. I'm feeling too happy too quick. Um, it says uh, that after this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished. Somebody say accomplish. Hmm. Accomplish. Amen. That the scriptures might be fulfilled. Says, I thirst. I thirst. Uh, interesting enough, John, I'm sorry, uh, well, we have John. John chapter 4, verse 32, you can just write it down, uh, says this. Jesus said unto them, my meat is to do the will. Mm, one of the components in that triangle. The will of him that sent me, watch this, and to finish his works. Ah, the disciples coming back and said, uh, you don't look hungry here. You look like you well. Look like all is well. And did anybody bring him anything to eat? They got in a little debate. And he began to tell them, listen, my food, my meat, ah, what sustains me is doing the will of God. Uh, people who don't want to do the will of God, you make me nervous. Hallelujah. You, you, you do something to me because uh, if you don't fear the Lord, amen, and if you don't have an assignment, then you're subject to do anything. Because if you ain't led by God, you're being led by somebody. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? Uh, uh, another verse in John chapter 10, I believe uh, Bishop Polite touched down on it last night before he got into high gear. Amen. Is in John chap uh, Hebrews chapter 7. Write that down. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 7. He says, Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book mm. it is written of me to do thy will mm. to do thy will somebody said thy will thy will oh God well, let's move right on along I believe I got 25 minutes now uh, we can't start talking about amen our thirst amen amen and, and I know it seems like it's uh, a little bit far fetched but in order to talk about this bishop we got to go to the garden of Eden the Garden of Eden, amen, was not a physical place. It was a spiritual place. What made Eden a, 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 a physical place is because God made it a spiritual place. When God, amen, looked down after he created humanity, amen, when he looked down, amen, for a dwelling place, what he did, amen, he, Eden was a place, amen, that God had created, amen, with a spiritual, amen, application for his own purpose. Eden, the, 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 the archaeologists right now, if you study it out, amen, I know Bishop Brandt knows this, amen, and Dr. Williams, amen, that Eden right now, if you try to look it up in, amen, try to look it up to try to find out where, they, where it is, amen, Eden right now, they cannot locate. I'm going to explain why. In the garden, amen, praise the Lord, when God was looking, amen, to dwell amongst, amen, his creation, his greatest creation, Oh, glory to God. Ah, he landed, his spirit landed, amen, in a place, amen, his supernatural, divine, amen, intervention, amen, his, his purpose, amen, what was on his mind, amen, of stepping out eternity into time, amen, to deal with man and to, to create humanity, amen, to begin, amen, his purpose. When his spirit, amen, hit a place, it wasn't a place that he had to come. This is why the presence of God can be accessed by in any place at any time by anybody who's willing to worship him in spirit and in truth. Uh, you don't have to have, amen, church inside of a building. I can have church, amen, at a stop sign on a corner. 
If I throw my hands up, amen, and make monologue or dialogue, amen, and just start worshiping him, amen, his presence, amen, would rest on me. You can be in a jail cell, amen, like Paul and Silas, and you begin to understand that if you begin to magnify God, amen, your jail cells might come open. You can be in a hospital, amen, laying flat on your back, and if you can just open your mouth, hallelujah, begin to, amen, to magnify God, hallelujah, your body, amen, will begin, and amen, to be healed. Because when God comes, amen, amen, change, amen, is inevitable. I said when God shows up on the canvas of any situation, amen, change is inevitable. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so here it is, God, amen, his presence, Elder James. I'm going to teach you something tonight. That's all right. Amen. <laughs> we always get in debate about the word. Ain't not a debate, but we just share the word. Eden, amen, was not a physical place at first. It was a spiritual thing that God, amen, chose a geographical location, a locality, and says, this is where I'm going to dwell. So it became Eden. Somebody said the presence of God. Keep up with the triangle. Amen. A place, amen, where humanity, amen, can dwell. Hallelujah. Where they can be in his presence. Where they can, amen, speak, talk to God. Adama, amen, love communion with God. You will find that, amen, if you understand your Bible, when God was speaking to Adama, Ish couldn't understand what was happening. That's a little bit ahead of time. But, Doc, if I can, when Adama missed the mark, God warned them, amen, amen, that you can, everything in this garden is okay, and y'all know the story, amen, but the, the day you eat of this tree, amen, of good and evil, amen. You 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 know you're gonna be messed up now. You're gonna be you gonna you're gonna you're gonna surely die. But we know God didn't meant amen a spiritual death, I mean a physical uh physical death because Adam lived to be 930 years old. Amen, somebody. But watch this. God driven them out of the presence of himself. Satan was not combative against God, amen, just because amen, Michael kicked his butt, amen, out of heaven. What made the enemy so combative against God, Sister Misha, it was this fact, that he was going to miss the presence of God. He would never have an opportunity. This is why he even get mad with us. Amen. We'll be coming here worshiping. That's why he'll try to distract us and start all kind of foolishness. Amen. And, and, and put all kind of things across your mind while you're in the house of God. Amen. Glorifying, magnifying your God. Amen. Because he's angry, amen, that you now have an opportunity to do, amen, what he only can miss for our eternity. So he kicks him out of the garden. And when he kicks him out of the garden, amen, God's presence, amen, was lifted. Now, I'm going to say something here. And I'm gonna, I have to go this way to make my point, and then we're going to come on in. I know I got my time is leaving me. But watch this. When, amen, the presence of God, amen, Apostle Brand, amen, was lifted. Eden could no longer be found. It could no longer be found. Still today. But in place, amen, uh, a bishop polite, amen, of Eden, amen, now, amen, can't be found. They, they, they suggest that, amen, right through there where it was, where the four rivers, they suggest, amen, that 100 miles has been added to that area. 100 miles. Somebody said 100 miles. And I said, Lord, why is this? Where did it come from? What is that? What's up with that? What's, what, well, tell me about that. And God took me back, amen, and the Spirit of the Lord began to deal with me and show me some things and speak to me. He says, do you remember when, when Adama was running from me? When my voice, amen, took feet, and I began to walk, amen, in the cool of the day, looking for him. And my voice began to chase him because he's running from me. Using a covering for what, she, what he was working with, amen, at one time. He says every time that God, amen, when his voice, amen, took feet, as the scripture says, God, amen, God's voice, amen, come walking through the cool of the day, amen. When God's voice took feet, the Bible said, God, the Spirit of the Lord began to tell me, excuse me, the Spirit of the Lord began to deal with me and told me this. He said, Elder Toby, he told me this. He said that every time God took a step, Every time he took a step, running and chasing Adama. As he's running for God, from God covering himself because he knew he was in trouble. He knew he was guilty about what he did. Every time he took a step, one step of God created automatically 10 miles. 
Because the Spirit of the Lord says he took one to ten steps. That's what he spoke to me. And every step he took, every time he landed his foot, Bishop Polite, God, the Spirit of the Lord says it created ten miles. So I said, Lord, now I understand because they said it's 100 miles in the place where Eden used to be. Does anybody get the same amen? I know I got 19 minutes now. Bishop said 30 minutes. I'll be on my bar five. Okay, y'all hear me? This is where, amen, that place. But Eden is now lifted. It was lifted, amen, when God, amen, took his presence. When Adam and Eve rebelled, amen, against God, amen, his presence, amen, was lifted when he drove them out of the garden. And then let me tell you something. This is the only way that you and I can enjoy the presence of God. Let me say this first. I want y'all to understand something. Sin sends nobody to hell. Disobedience do. Sin you can repent for. Let me say this again. Sin doesn't send you to hell. Disobeying God does. Being disobedient does. Sin you can repent for. When they were driven out, the spirit of his, his presence was lifted. The Eden does not, nobody can find Eden today. It's gone. But it sent the longing for the presence of God throughout there. I, I, that's why I was in trouble trying to write in the office, Bishop, because I didn't know how far I was going to be to go in 30 plus minutes. Hallelujah. So, uh, the number 10, since we're talking about the 10, is very significant for this year. The number 10, amen, is the, what God loves because it's a, it's a perfect number with God. Th this year, you should develop, amen, one word in your prayers. And, and when you're fasting and talking to God and uh, communion and fellowshipping with him, amen, it is exponential. This year, amen, the number 10, when, and the preachers know what I'm talking about, what that number 10 means with God. This year, amen, I know we talked about 07 and we got educated and we talked about 8, amen, new beginnings. We talk about 9, what God will do. but the number 10, this year, even the devil himself, can't stop you from getting what God, amen, has promised, amen, in your life. All this week, amen, I've been having, amen, some, some supernatural visitations. To where, amen, when I, I just start crying, amen, the presence just overwhelms me. And I start crying so, mother, amen, and when I come to myself, amen, my shirt be soaking wet. That have never happened to me, ever. But I've been praying for this for three and a half years. That not only would I just come into the glory, but I will wear the glory suit that's available to each and every one of us. You don't have to put it on and take it off. You can wear the glory suit every day. Mm. Somebody say amen. Mm, mm, mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, 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 I know my time. Watch this. In Gethsemane. Amen. Uh, and I try to write what I, what I think I could have got through with, amen, but it's tough. When it talks about Jesus in the garden, and he's telling the disciples, y'all stay here and, and watch. And, and, and when you're watching, amen, I want you praying. And, and, and can I just add, amen, a, a, a thing or two in here, amen, just in our hearing. Prayer, amen, keeps you from temptation. Prayer also ties you into the will of God. What, he, what prayer does is prayer gives heaven the right to interfere with earthly matters. In the garden, Jesus is praying. Amen. And he's God, amen, in the flesh. Oh, God. And, 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 and the Bible says, amen, that, 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 amen, things begin to get tough, amen, as amen, now, amen, he understanding, amen, what the task was going to be all about. Oh, God, I'm trying to get through here. I ain't going to bore you much longer. Watch this. It says and that, that the sweat was as the drops of puddles of blood. Now, people in here been working for a long time. Even the curse, amen, to man, that you should work, amen, to the... Sweat of your brow. Thank you, Bishop. Yeah, you know, but now nobody ever worked that hard that your sweat was as the drops of puddles of blood. 
So I says once again, Lord, what is this all about? And the Lord says, amen, begin to show me, amen, that his sweat, amen, amen, that ran off his head, that came down, amen, to his eyes, which was ultimately his tears, which ultimately was actual blood. But it was discolored, amen, and it stayed like sweat, amen, because it wasn't time, amen, for it to be turned into blood, because Jesus, amen, was the conduit carrying the royal blood, amen, to the time, amen, for manifestation at the cross. For an example, in the garden, amen, of Gethsemane, amen, Jesus died, amen, spiritually. In, on the cross, on Golgotha, amen, he died the physical death. But he died, amen, in the garden when he says, not my will, But let thine will be done. That's when he died. If you want to talk about the time, amen, when, hallelujah, when a saint truly, amen, has died, amen, and on, amen, and in a real relationship with God, amen, when they've yielded everything over, amen, when they give up thy will. And tell the Lord, not my will. If any man come unto me, come after me, let him deny himself, take up. His cross and I endeavor to say again until God's will become our will, the will of God ain't going to never be done. You might get goosebumps, amen. You might feel a little jerk, a little twitch every now and then, amen. But when the music go off, it'll stop. But only the people, amen, who's walking, amen, in the divine will of God. And I'm not talking about permissive will. I'm talking about the perfect will of God. It's those, amen, that abide under the shadow who have a communion and fellowship, amen. And they know their gods. And those that know their gods will do great exploits. I can tell, amen, amen, who's tied, amen, to the promise and the passion of God because amen they're sold out to the will of God and God uses them when everything get broken inside of one hallelujah breaking the alabaster box I preached that long years ago about people amen breaking the alabaster box Amen. When the woman came, amen, and she knew that she needed Jesus. This was her last, perhaps, opportunity, amen, to come in, amen. She knew she couldn't stay where she was. She was tired of being there. Hallelujah. The Bible says she broke the alabaster box. Amen. She didn't crack it and pour a little bit on him. She broke his alabaster box. The other woman, amen, I love to talk about her. Amen. How, amen, when you get broken, amen, and sell out to God and begin to do the will of God. Amen. How you don't mind crying in the service. Well, if you have to get ugly, you can get ugly. Amen. Whatever it takes, you say, Lord, I'm thirsty. And whatever it takes to get, amen, you didn't hear today. Whatever it takes to get another deposit. Whatever it takes to get some increase. Whatever it takes to get a revelation. That's what I'm going to do. If I got to cry, amen. Some people are too cute. They don't want nobody to see them crying. They don't want to get this figure. They don't want to mess up your suit. You can always take your suit to the cleaner. But let me tell you something. You better not miss the move of God. You better not miss the power of God. You better get up out that seat. If you got to roll on the floor like coconuts, whatever it takes, you better do it. And I'm trying to get through here. The sweat, he says, was... The blood. But it was discovered, discolored and covered, amen, for a time. Jesus was righteous. There wasn't no need for the blood to be displayed. But down the road, at the cross, it would need it. Because without then the shedding of blood, there would be no remission of sin. It's just as true, amen, that, that they say, amen, if there's no death, there's no resurrection. You see what I'm saying? But the blood, somebody say the blood. Bishop, the Spirit of the Lord began to tell me and show me, amen. I know we got to talk about this later. The Spirit began to show me, amen, that I don't care how much we sweat, it will never come be thick enough to drop as puddles of blood. But in this text, the Spirit of the Lord began to deal with me and tell me, amen, that it was blood. It was his tears. But it was covered for a time. I'm going somewhere into the time. Symbolically, the agony. That was, amen, on Jesus, amen, mind that he was dealing with at that time, Bishop Polite. Was symbolically, amen, the agony. Somebody said the agony. The agony that was on his mind was symbolic, amen, to the thorn of crown that they placed on Jesus' head. I'm going to tell you what the Spirit of the Lord told me. Y'all stay with me right through here. Hallelujah. It was the same, the Spirit of the Lord said it was the same thing, amen, as when they put that crown, that thorn, amen, on his head and crushed it into his skull. And the blood came down. 
And I said, well, Lord, I'm going to need some more of this now because, you know, Bishop, check things out. He says, you remember Aaron? How the anointing began to flow? It flows from the, down to the, on to the, the blood, amen. This is why, symbolically, it was the same thing he said, and this is why it was the drops of puddles of blood. But it was not, amen, the tears. I mean, it was not the, the tears as, as it would seem, amen, or the sweat, amen, as we declared, but it was actually the blood. The agony was so crushing, amen, and so, amen, ag agonizing him and so agonistic to him, amen, that if it wasn't from the covering, amen, the, verb, the blood would have been shown. That's okay, Lord. I'm hearing you. I'm hearing you. I'm hearing you. Okay. So he says now, amen. He says, this is the situation about the sweat. Somebody say, I thirst. I thirst. He did not want, amen, to go through this. This is why he kept going back. Yes, Jesus Christ, Christos, the only one, did not want to, amen, go to Calvary. Don't fool yourself. People try to make it look like Jesus was happy to go. No, he wasn't. And he was 100% God and 100% man. He did not want to go. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Oh, God, I know I got a few minutes now. Lord, I need more time than this. Listen, 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 listen. He kept going back. Somebody say Jesus. He keeps going back and he says, uh, Father, if it be thine will, let, 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 let us build a cup. Mm, let it pass from me. Hallelujah. Now, now, this is not, amen, his divinity side. This is humanity side. Got to be. Because he knew when he left, amen, heaven, amen, he knew what he was coming to do. Because he spoke and said, Lo, I come through the volume of the book to do what? To do thy will, O oh God. O oh God, I come to do your will. I come. But why is it that now we're at the garden, amen, and now you understand, amen, fully, amen, what is to befall you, what you're going to have to go through. And now you're backing up. Mr. Blight said it best last night. When you think about, amen, your sins, it makes you get uncomfortable. <sighs> think about all of the sins on the world of the world. Think about what he had to deal with. Because now he was going to have to be crushed. And he was going to have to match the depths of the sins of the world. Somebody said the world. The with his life. Hallelujah. 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 This is why, amen, people, amen, get all excited, amen, about heaven. Amen, you can't get excited about heaven until you get a revelation of hell. <laughs> I know you expect me to say a revelation, amen, of Jesus. You need that. People don't get, ever get a revelation of Jesus, don't hang around long. They're always in and out. They're back and forth. But I said, if you ever get a revelation of hell, it'll make you appreciate heaven. It'll make you appreciate grace and mercy. Can you say Amen. So now he says, amen, once again, he says about the tears, amen, the sweat, amen, the agony of the mind, amen, that now coming down, and when it gets down his face, his tears now, we can understand why it's the drops, the puddles of blood, because God said all of that agony caused a crushing. And he said it was symbolically to that thorn, that thorn, that crown of thorn that was put on his head that caused the blood. To come now. Somebody say, I thirst. I thirst. People, humanity, have been, amen, thirsty for a long time. And we oftentimes, and, and, and if not all the time, amen, until we come into the will of God, somebody said the perfect will of God. Not the permissive will now, but the perfect will of God. We always try to feel that, amen, because we don't have, amen, real revelation knowledge about what God requires and what it takes, amen, to be victorious, amen, and to please God. Right. So we'll try to fill it oftentimes with other things that pacify but it never satisfies the need the void that's in our life amen and the only way amen you're gonna amen get it what only the only thing that quenches that thirst amen is coming amen to the fountain <laughs> it's just too it's a, coming to the somebody say jesus he just meant jesus amen it's not an enigma it's not an enigma it's not nothing hard it's coming to the fountain he that is a thirst let him come let him come and drink. Hallelujah. You don't need money. Hallelujah. Just come. And come, amen, while you're messed up. Don't try to get it together because if you're going to get it together, amen, Jesus would have had to go to the cross. Come just as you are. Messed up. God, I need more time than this. Uh, just messed. 
messed up first thing. Just as you are. Amen. I, 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 I can't talk about nobody else because you might get mad. But if I talk about me, amen, you can't get mad. Amen. I was so messed up, I didn't think the Lord could do anything with me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I was just that messed up. Now, I know everybody else, amen, paint a good picture of you. Amen. You, you, nothing ever went wrong with you. You was born saved. Amen. Everything. But I was a mess. And it wasn't until I sold out. I even told a pastor, amen, that invited me to his church. And when I came, brother, I told him, I says, I don't know when I'm coming. But when I come, First Lady Brand, I told him, I said, I'm selling out all. And it was a months, but I came. And when the preacher, amen, uh, what's his name, uh, 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 what's his name, over at False Temple number two, he, he's dead now, amen, had true, uh, true divine, amen, deliverance church when he's died, Ella Bracey, amen, Ella Bracey, amen, amen, gave the altar call, and I came down, amen, and I was about ten rows back, and every step I took seemed like the altar got further and further away, to the point when I got down there, I fell on the altar, and he lifted me up, amen, crying, amen, like Pastor Paul, amen, served the Lord in tears, he said, son, it's all right now. That's been 17 years ago. And I'm telling you, I'm still running today. What are you saying? The blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sins? Oh, what, what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood. The blood. Somebody say the blood. All right. I thirst. I'm getting out of the way, Apostle Brian. Watch this. Watch this. Amen. So now, amen, we're going to journey on over, amen, because I got the task of dealing with our thirst. Amen. Uh, 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 on the cross. Amen. The enemy, amen, thinking that he, amen, uh, was doing something uh, with Jesus. But what he was doing was actually helping, amen, God. Uh, you said it the other night, amen. Uh, if the prince of this world would have known, he would have not have crucified. He, 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 glory, uh, the Lord of glory, he would have left him alone. That joker was so slick. Amen. That he remembered. He went back, amen, in his mind. And he began to think, amen, back, amen, to the garden. Amen. Where God was beginning to create everything and create humanity. And things was working in order. And watch this here. Uh oh, God. Can, can, I, can I take you somewhere else? Remember when I was telling you about Eden? Let me, let me tell you what keeps everything in balance. And then we're going to come back to the cross. I'm going to talk about our thirst. I'm going to preach for three minutes and I'm going to sit down. Watch this. God created, amen, when he created his presence, amen, which uh, spiritual was a physical place, a spiritual place, and then turned into a physical place, amen. When he created Eden, check this out, amen, he created everything he created, amen, he created, amen, a dwelling place for it. And as long as all these things stay in this proper place, amen, it can live. It won't malfunction. He created, amen, the elements, amen, and as long as the elements stay where it is, amen, it will survive. It will be operative, right? He created the vegetation, love to stay in the soil, it will be operative, Right? He created the flesh, and as long as it stay in this dwelling place, it will be operative. He created humanity, and as long as humanity stay in this proper place, amen, it'll be operative. But if the star ever falls from the sky, it'll malfunction. It'll burn up before it hit the earth. If you take vegetation out of the soil, it'll malfunction. It will die. It needs soil. If you take fish, amen, out of its element, out of its place, amen, it, it will die because it needs the water. If you take man out of the presence of God, I'm trying to do this best I can. What's it? So, now Adam, so, I mean, Adama, uh, 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 he, he's supposed to have been done doing something, amen. And then the first man, Adam, amen, made so much, made such a havoc, amen, of what, amen, we could have been enjoying and sharing today. If you know anything about theology, check this out. Amen. Jesus, when he came, amen, he didn't come to die just merely for us. Jesus' purpose in coming, being the second man, Adam, which also refers to the first man, Adam, he came, amen, to redeem, amen, Adam's glory. That's the real purpose of Jesus coming, to redeem Adam's honor. People love to run to the scripture. Amen. The son of man coming to seek and save that which was lost. I say, you lying. Because if you're suggesting that he came to seek and save that which was lost, which means humanity, tell me why it was the church that put him on the cross and tell, him after, tell me why after 2,000 years people still won't get saved. He came to, somebody say he came to redeem Adam's honor. It'll, it'll come back to you. D oh, Lord, Bishop, Bishop ran I'm, I'm going to get caught up. Watch this here. The enemy, and when Jesus was on the cross, he was so gullible and so subtle that his mind reached back to the garden, first lady. His nasty self. Somebody say his nasty self. I'm talking about Adam. I'm talking about Satan. I'm, you can say he's nasty. I know you got some other choice words, but we're in church, but I'm talking about him. 
his, his nasty self went back in his mind and he remembered seeing God, amen, cut a door right there, right? For Adam in the side. Remember, he put that little, you know, that little surgery, that little surgery right there. Amen. But it was for the birth and amen of, of humanity. <laughs> if you're in here today and you say that you saved, amen, amen, Adam, amen, is your mom and daddy because he's the first human ever made. When Eve came forth from man, he, Eve was his sister before she was his wife. That went right over everybody's head. Satan on the cross was so dumb still, sister, today, that on the cross, this is why, amen, he allowed, he, they remember the scriptures, we understand the scriptures. I'm trying to hurry through as quick as I can. Y'all forgive me. But watch this here. Remember, he, amen, they knew they couldn't break his legs, but what did they do? That Roman soldier was mere, mean enough. Look, look what Satan, amen, getting him to pierce him in his side. But if he wasn't so dumb, he, wasn't, he was unmissing, uh, Apostle Brand, the opportunity to realize one fact. That yes, he, was, no, he always wanted to mock God. So now, amen, God done done it with Adam, amen, to bring forth Israel, right? You know, to bring forth. But watch this here. Now when he does it, he think he's mocking God. He's doing something. He, he's killing Jesus. But guess what he was doing? Creating another door that now all humanity. I'm going to see how many can get that without me bringing that home. You, you got that one? I heard, I heard someone sort of said they got it. Yeah, so he thought it was doing something. Well, let me, let me cut this off across the field. Hallelujah. All right. Is this all right? Is anybody learning anything? So now, Jesus is on the cross. Amen. And he's saying, I thirst. Y'all know the story. I want to tell y'all about this. We've been preaching this for years. Some of y'all been saved a long time. Amen. He was not thirsty for water. They even tried to give him gall, you know. Vinegar, you know, they gave it to people, amen, who was being executed to ease the pain or to antagonize some. Remember, he refused it. So I said, oh, Lord, I need some help with this again. Why was he thirsty? Then the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord said he was thirsty because he was longing, amen, to bring righteousness by doing and fulfilling the will of God. This is why the scripture that we read, amen, talks, talked about it, amen, in the in book John chapter 4, verse th was th was it 32, amen, that he came to do the will of God. Hebrew chapter 10, verse 7 says he came to do the will of God. This, amen, was what he was thirsty for. Remember the presence, amen. The presence is still in the equation. Let me tell you something. When God done his, his job, amen, when Elohim created his job, done his job, amen, he, he rested, he retired. Now Jesus Christ, amen, was coming to the end of his, and amen, he missed it on the Father anyway, and he wanted to go and retire. The Holy Spirit is still in the earth, and he, but he can't get out of here, amen, until all things are done, which means he may never get out of here. Are y'all hearing me? Watch this. He was thirsty to fulfill the will of God. And this is where we're going to come in. Somebody say amen. Before Jesus, amen, died on the cross, everything was horizontal. The two thieves made it horizontal. Had not Jesus, had not Jesus amen, uh, had to die between two thieves, amen, guess what? When the, when, the, when, the, when the enemy, amen, got in that Roman soldier and pierced him in his side, instead his blood come screaming down his side like we, like we sang the song, his blood would have went up. It would have never came down. Because anything that is royal, anything that is holy and righteous, heaven hath to enjoy first. He told his mother, amen, when he was risen, amen, hallelujah, when she come running to him, amen, he said, don't touch me for I have not ascended yet unto my... The curtains in the temple was rent from top to... But because the two thieves, amen, which represented, amen, all of the law and what it couldn't do, amen, that it was weak, amen, all of the bondage and all these things, amen, it, it was a horizontal line. But now when Jesus comes and stands in the middle of, amen, on the cross, two thieves are on, on both sides and now he's in the middle, amen, everything becomes positive. So now it's vertical, which is a positive sign, which tells us, amen, that anything that we need today, amen, has already been fulfilled. It's already been provided for. I don't care what you're dealing with. If it's sickness, if it's, if it's paralysis, if it's marital problems, if it's your lost children, amen, if you took a pregnancy test and you're looking at the sign. Somebody saying, I hope it's negative. I hope it's negative. I hope it's negative. <laughs> I'm about to, Apostle Brett. Uh, <laughs> Jesus saying, I'm thirsty and I'm about to come in. Jesus said, amen, I, I, I thirst. 
But what he was thirsty for, amen, fulfilled the righteousness. Remember that shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. Amen, he knew now what, is, what, what, is, what he had to do, amen, and now he was coming to, amen, the end of that. But that which was inside of him that was going to settle, amen, the, the issue, amen, of sin for all eternity, amen, had to get outside of him. Inside of him, his body was only, amen, that could do it, amen, that was carrying, amen, the, the, the promise, amen, and the power of God which humanity needed. So it was no good to him while he was on the inside, while the blood was on the inside of him. But it had to get outside of him. So when he said, I thirst, he was thirsting for the will of God. But he knew, amen, there had to be a crushing. He knew that the blood had to be shed. Jesus, understand, we're not in Gethsemane now. I'm on the cross. Somebody say amen. amen. So hallelujah, you know the story. Amen, I'm going to come in right here. You know the story, hallelujah, amen, they, 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 they offered him drink and he wouldn't take it, amen, and they making fun of him and, and taking him through all these changes, if you will, and everything, and hallelujah, amen, he don't talk, amen, to, amen, both of the men, amen, on both sides of them, amen, as, as Bishop Polite, amen, so eloquently put it on last night, amen, one, amen, was acting crazy, the other one, amen, is in a good place right about now, amen, look at your neighbor, say, you're in a good place right about now. So hallelujah, here it is. Uh, glory to God. Hallelujah, that Roman soldier pierced him. Yes, in his side. And the Bible said, out forth came, amen, blood and water. And we understand, amen, what the blood was all about, amen. And we understand what the water, amen, was all, was all about. But here it is, that blood, amen, it comes streaming down inside Elder James. Hallelujah. Had to go, amen, into the place. Oh, God. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we know about the mercy seat. We know it had to hit the mercy seat, but it also had to take another place. Amen. And now that it took him down, amen. Let's say he's assumed that he's dead, amen. And they don't took him down. And they knew, amen, they had to take him down because of the custom of the things getting ready to happen. Y'all already know this. I'm not going to bore you. So, hallelujah. Now, amen, it takes him down, amen. They put him in a tomb, amen. And can anybody tell me why are we still saying, amen, that it took three days? He was in the earth for three days. If he was there Friday, amen, and they took him down, amen, before the Sabbath, how can you make three out of, how many days was he in the earth? Why is that? The Lord showed me this years ago. It has something to do, amen, with the Jewish calendar and the Jewish number system. It's called Amar Amar. It means that if, if, I, if I work, amen, one hour of the day, it's, I can uh, uh, literally say that it was all day. If I say I was in, amen, the Zarephath Tabernacle, amen, for five hours, I can say I was here all day. So this is why we say, he, amen, he rose again on the third day. But if you look at scripture, there's no way he can rise early on Sunday morning if they took him off the cross on... His blood coming down, amen, out his side. Hallelujah. Piercing the cords because now it has one more final destination. And here it is going to God. It's going down through the cores of the earth. Now let me tell you something. Just like there's three levels of heaven, there's three levels of hell. We don't have time to talk about them. But let me tell you something. Now his blood, amen, got to go, amen, into the place. Hallelujah. To redeem all those, amen, that had not been baptized uh, before Jesus had come. So now the Bible begins to tell us, hallelujah, that now the blood is going down through the cores to a place. Here's Jesus. Amen. Now taking this commercial. Amen. Down. Amen. To a place. Amen. Call hell. Amen. Can you see him walking? Amen. Amen. In hell. In Revelation chapter 1. Amen. Looking at Satan and Satan down the throne of party. Thinking that he got God one last time. Yes, I got your first man Adam down in the garden of Eden. Yet now, hallelujah, I got your son Jesus Christ. I got him on the cross. Yeah, but let me tell you something. Remember, if he knew what he was doing, he would have left Jesus alone. So here it is. Hallelujah. He goes down. Revelation chapter the one that says he goes into hell, kick the door open, hallelujah. Amen, Satan, I'm throwing a party. Jesus walks in there, amen, the music stop, if you will. Amen, I'm trying to paint a little dramatization on your mind. Hallelujah, now, hallelujah, we see him, hallelujah. Now looking ugly, thinking, amen, that Jesus is coming, amen, to seal, amen, his fate. But Jesus told him, I'm not now, but down the road somewhere. I'm going to come, hallelujah, and I'm going to deal with you. But come here, you got something that don't belong to you. Give me these keys off of your side. These keys, hallelujah, don't belong to you. Jesus started walking down all of the corridors of hell started unlocking the doors. Hallelujah for all the people. Hallelujah. That Satan had bound up. That Satan amen, had locked up down there. Amen. Against their will. Waiting on the council of Israel to come. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So now, hallelujah, the Bible declares that Jesus led captivity captive. Here, hallelujah, now, amen, Jesus said, I'm getting ready. Hallelujah to ascend. All those who want to live. All those who want eternal life. Read John 
chapter 5 when you get home. All you got to do is follow me. Now let me give you the revelation of this. How many of you read, hallelujah, Matthew chapter 27 where it said those that were staying a long time got up out the grave and started walking the streets of Jerusalem all over again. That means that that blood that I was trying to tell you of Jesus Christ had to go down into that place and do the work that God sent him to do. By the time Jesus got up, everybody's following him. That's how the graves came open. That's why Job declared with faith. He said, listen, I know my Redeemer liveth. And he said, I know I was standing this last day. But verse 25, what he said, he said, even though I die, graveyard dead, and these cake of worms are eating up my flesh, yet in my flesh shall I see the Lord. What is he talking about? He said, I know there's going to be a resurrection. I got understanding about that. And he said, one day, I'm going to get up out of the grave. Won't let them be able to hold my body down. I'm going to rise when my Savior come. I'm going to rise when my debt get paid for. So hallelujah. Job knew something that most of us still ain't got a revelation of. That the blood of Jesus will set you free. That the blood of Jesus will make you free. When the blood hits your life, I don't care what you in. I don't care what you tied up to. I don't care what your hang up is. I don't care what your burden is been. You will be freed. When Jesus shows up, the devil got to loose. His power, his grip. Everything that he got holding you. The bands have to be loose. Hear hallelujah. What Joel was saying at the stitching of what he was saying. He said, one day I will get this glorified body. One day you and I will go back to a certain age. I don't care how old you is. I don't care how old your children is. One day you and your kids will be the same age. 33. When you receive the glorified body. Everybody age. I don't care if you're 99 now. You will get young again. I don't care if you're 10. You will. Hallelujah. End up being the same age. 33. Somebody shout 33. I don't have enough time to get in on so, so now, hallelujah, and I'm finna sit down. Uh, 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 the enemy, amen, no doubt he's lost. And God unfinished it. Yeah, yeah. He settled it, Jerry, forever. It wasn't a temporary fix. God doesn't do anything happiness. Whatever he does, he does well. He does well. Hallelujah. If he saved you, you save for real. <laughs> How many of you say you have resurrection power? How many of you say I got resurrection power? That means that you no longer need God to come at your every beck and call. You got power down in your zero, in your innermost being, to speak your own deliverance. You don't even need to really go to a physician. If you can't get the one, it's okay. If you can, we understand now, okay? Because Proverbs 18, 14 says, man's spirit shall sustain his infirmities. Everybody else run to this other scripture that they love, and that's okay. He was wounded for my transgressions. And I like that. When Bruce Fair Nicotis, y'all know it. Wave at me. You know what I'm saying. The chest has a peace upon him by his stripes. We are. But I just want to give you another one, amen. Proverbs 18, 14 says, man's spirit shall sustain his infirmities. That means, amen, what you got inside of your zero, in your innermost being, is powerful enough to heal, to deliver, amen, to set you free, to bring about the miraculous, to bring exponential, supernatural, divine, amen, activity or intervention that we need in our earthly life. Yeah. Earth still has no sorrow that heavens can't cure. But remember, amen, the kingdom of God is where right now? Where's the kingdom of God? Death lies in the power of your tongue. Open your mouth and whatever the devil's trying to kill, amen, this week and the rest of this physical year, amen, death lies in the power of your tongue. Open your mouth and speak life. Uh, say he's talking about resurrection power. Resurrection power. Say that. Say resurrection power. Resurrection. You have down in the genesis of you to speak your own deliverance. Your own success. You don't have the burden, amen, Apostle Brand. We need him to do more. Hallelujah. God knows I need to do more. I'm burdening him enough. But if we understand, amen, what Jesus died, amen, to do for us, 
to give us. We'll realize we don't have to go to him, burden him for everything. Understand what's in you, who's in you, and you can get out of anything that the enemy trying to put you in. Well, we trust that that message uh, was a truly a, a blessing to you. Uh, you can obtain our uh, audio or uh, even be better and, or a CD copy of that uh, by coming by the ministry and we'll be happy to take you to oblige you with that. We'd like to take this, office, this opportunity to also pray with you right now, those who need to be saved. Just bow your head and say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me in your blood. Save me right now and I'll make you my Lord and save you. If you pray that prayer, you truly can say, and you can call us number here from 904. 525-5814 and let us know that you prayed your prayer and got born again. Okay? So again, this Sunday morning, we'll be looking forward amen, to seeing your face at 191 Pleasant Street, Allendale, South Carolina, 29810 at 9.30 a.m. Our biblical institutional teaching where we teach kingdom, amen, to help people understand about God's word uh, more verbatim. Uh, then at 11 a.m. we will have our morning glory service, our the offering service. The offering means just when God said, I'm coming myself. Uh, the angels we all stay, I'm going myself. So come and join with us in each and every one of the services. 9.30 a.m. our biblical institutional teaching. 11 a.m. our morning glory, the offering teaching. At 11 a.m. God bless you. We hope to see you. Bye-bye.